Welcome to Magento Community Edition installation. This is part two in a multi-part series aimed at getting Magento Community up and running in your environment. While part one was focused on installing sample data, for this talk the focus is on installing the base Magento Community web application, which includes both the front-end website and the administration interface. You do not have to install sample data and install Magento Community, however we highly recommend it, especially if you're new to Magento. It gives you a chance to browse Magento features, it is a great platform for getting familiar with Magento capabilities and helping to define what you want your Magento solution to be. Before we move on, for those of you new to this video series, let's talk a little bit about Bluefish. We've been building solutions for over 15 years. Our primary areas of expertise include e-commerce, web experience management, web content management, and enterprise document management. We tailor software to meet our clients' business needs, and our motto is, we believe companies deserve to have it done right the first time. Back to the tutorial. A recap of prerequisites from part one, installing sample data. You must have installed Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, otherwise known as LAMP. We will be using Ubuntu. You also need to have downloaded and accessible the installation files, which you can, can find on magentocommerce.com download. You need server and database administrator privileges, and optionally, the Magento Community Edition sample data installed in your environment. Now, let's get started with the demonstration. In part one of this video series, Installing Sample Data, we walk through downloading, extracting, and copying the Magento installation files. In addition, we set up the Magento demo database. A recap for those of you new to this video series, to download the installation files, you'll navigate to Magento's website and go to their download page. This can be found under Products, Open Source CE. Once on the download page, you'll scroll down and select the desired format for the full release and for the sample data. We've already downloaded and extracted both of these files. Once extracted, you'll want to copy them into your web server doc root directory, which in our case is var www.html, and now there is a folder called Magento. The next step was to create the database if you have not already done so. For this tutorial, we will not be creating a new database. For more details on creation, please see Part 1, Magento Community, Installing Sample Data. Once the files are copied and the database is created, the next step is to update the directory and file permission for the Magento web server installation. Magento installation directory and all subdirectories are owned by the web server user. This enables the web server to change files in them, but other users, with the exception of root, cannot access them. The final settings should be up to your security needs. For Magento, all the files for the web server user, the permission, the owner can read and write. And for all the directories, we'd like to give the web server user, who is the owner, full control. Read, write, and execute. To update these, I'm going to use Ubuntu's terminal, which you can open by selecting Control-Alt-T. In addition, I have created a local file, text file, with some shortcut commands to make these changes. To start off making the changes, first you're going to navigate to your doc root directory where Magento is installed. Next, we are going to change the owner to the web server user. For Ubuntu, Apache usually runs as www-data, and this is actually true for my web server. So we're going to change the owner. And now let's update those permissions. First, let's change the directory permissions to give the, this owner full rights. Next, we are going to change all of the files to give the owner read and write permission. Once the file permissions are set, you're going to want to open up a browser and launch your web server Magento installation. To get there, mine is under localhost. I'm going to type in localhost Magento. And the Magento's installation wizard should open. So I'm going to select 
I agree to the above terms and conditions. Select continue. The first screen you'll see is localization. So select your locale, select your time zone. I happen to be in the central time zone. Central Standard Time, and select your default currency, which mine is the US dollar. Then select Continue. One gotcha right here is when I first ran this, you need to make sure when you install PHP that you load mcrypt and curl. This can be installed and downloaded along with PHP, but both of those must be loaded before the configuration wizard will run. Once on this configuration screen, database type is MySQL, my host is localhost, and my database name, it will default to Magento, but our database, if you recall, is called Magento Demo. We want to enter the database username. Mine was Magento and the password. Let's leave the tables prefix blank. This is, you only use this if you have more than one Magento installation in the same database instance. Down to the web access options, the base URL for mine will be localhost Magento, and I'm going to leave the standard admin path, which will be admin. I'm going to select enable charts, which just allow charts to be displayed on my admin dashboard. I'm going to un leave unchecked the skip base URL validation, I am going to check the use web server Apache rewrites. This helps for improved search engine optimization. And for use secure URLs, I'm not running this demo in SSL mode. Under the session storage options, this is where you can save where the session data is stored. This right here by default is the file system. You should leave it to the file system. The only reason to change it would be if you have database clustering, then you should select database. Select continue. The next step is creating the admin account, a user who can log into your administrative screens. So I will create myself as an admin account. And for the encryption key, I'm going to leave the encryption key blank. With leaving this blank, Magento will create an encryption key. They're going to store it in your Magento web server installation. So that's under var www.html Magento. Under the folder app, Etsy local.xml. It's also going to display this on the next page. And there you go. You're all set. There's a short Magento survey at the end. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will see your encryption key. It's good to probably copy this off and save this in a, another place, even though we know it is also stored in the local.xml file. So from here, you can go to your front end or go to your back end. Let's select go to front end first to make sure this is working. And here is our Madison Island demo with all of the sample data. There is one other gotcha I would like to point out. If you have set your web server URL rewrites to true, like we did during our configuration, you need to make sure your mode underscore rewrite is enabled in your Apache configuration. Otherwise, when you navigate to some of the files, such as all of the women clothing, you might get a 404 error. Another thing you wanna check with this is make sure the mode underscore rewrite is enabled. And in the Apache configuration, under the directory var www, make sure allowed overwrite is set to file info or all. If you need to change this, by default it is none. Once you set it to all, you'll need to restart your Apache server. You can also go to your backend, which is the administrative interface. So I will log in as the user I created, which is myself. Have your dashboard, and in a future tutorial, we can go through what each of these items do. Thanks for watching. Feel free to reach out to us with any questions about this tutorial or request for future videos or blogs.